After an electrifying whack tourney run, the Lopes fell just short against rival New Mexico State in their second shot at the title. What did Dan think of his team's performance? With the departure of four seniors, we bring you a sneak peek at next year's roster. We'll take a look back at some of the year's most memorable plays. And after his season was cut short by a devastating knee injury, senior guard Jared Martin reflects on his GCU career. It's all coming up right now on The Dan Marley Show. We have to start establishing that this is our play. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. 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 Welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the GCU Lopes, Dan Marley, in this 10th and final installment of the 2018-19 season, wrapping up at the uh, CBI. But uh, let's travel back to that first game at the Western Athletic Conference, uh, Seattle. You had uh, just finished out the regular season with a tough loss at Seattle. You bounced back with an opening quarterfinal victory. Yeah, proud of our guys, you know, to come off a uh, Final two losses uh, at Utah, at Seattle, and then to start the uh, the WAC tournament. Um, Seattle was playing really well, mm -hmm. a lot of confidence. I think they had won five or six, so it was going to be a really good matchup uh, for us. Seattle played extremely well, uh, and I thought we just battled, went in at halftime uh, down, uh, came out in the second half, and, and took care of business. Uh, very proud of our guys, uh, had great production. Uh, Carlos obviously uh, played very well, Michael Finke, but uh, uh, big win against a team that was uh, had uh, a lot of confidence and, and thought they could do some damage in the postseason. It was a rematch of last year's WAC semifinal matchup against Utah Valley, a game in which you won, went by 15, but eight days prior to a matchup against Utah Valley that regular season, a 12-point loss, you bounce back with, a, with a, a big win there in the semifinal. Against another team that was hot, they had won maybe eight, nine in a row, uh, had just gotten, uh, you know, beaten us at their place, uh, had kind of a, a redemption on their mind from last year, another semifinal matchup that we were able to beat them uh, last year. So we came out again down at halftime. Uh, again, Carlos had an <laughs> unbelievable game offensively, uh, really carried us there. and. Uh, found a way down the stretch, uh, you know, didn't really convert offensively, but got some big stops and found a way to win against, uh, again, a really good team that was uh, uh, playing extremely well. Uh, Carlos Johnson lit it up. Had 31 against Seattle, 35 against Utah Valley. That uh, was very close to the uh, WAC record back in 97 with Keith Van Horn. He certainly, uh, what, what was uh, what was in his uh, his serial because he came out and definitely played well in the tournament. Yeah, you know, Carlos had, had started playing really well offensively at the at the end of the year. Had uh, really started to, you know, he, a credit to him, he was in the gym working on his jump shot, and uh, when he's able to shoot threes at the clip that he was shooting at the end of the year, it really makes it hard for people to guard him because they have to respect that jump shot. And then with his athletic ability to get to the basket, to get to get fouled. Uh, to go to the free throw line and convert uh, free throws there. It, it, it made it a hard matchup for anybody to guard him, and uh, he picked a, a really good time to play his two best games. Second year of tournament eligibility, you go right back to the uh, conference championship. That in itself is quite an accomplishment, but you take on a buzzsaw in New Mexico State. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a tough game. Uh, you know, they, uh, 30 wins, uh, had kind of dominated the league, uh, but our guys felt confident we had lost. Everybody knows about the buzzer beater at New Mexico State, lost by three here at home. I was very concerned going to that game because it'd be our third game in three nights. And, you know, basically I was playing uh, six guys, uh, a lot of minutes, and uh, I knew our guys were a little gassed. Uh, New Mexico State's a team that runs 11, 12, 13 guys out there uh, at a time, can throw waves at you. So I was a little concerned with that. Uh, obviously we came out uh, very uh, high, uh, started off the game 8 nothing with a lot of emotion. And then I think, uh, to be honest, uh, not only is New Mexico State really good, uh, but we ran out of gas. And uh, they got hot, shot extremely well from the three-point line. Uh, Queen was really good for them, as he has been coming off the bench. And we just couldn't answer the bell. Very disappointed, um, but again, proud of our guys. I thought we just, we ran out of gas. Then you go to the uh, CBI, the College Basketball Invitational, uh, taking on uh, Coach Huggins and uh, West Virginia. Quite the place to play. They had a good crowd there, but unfortunately you guys came up short. Yeah, I was excited to go there. Um, it's another story program that we can list uh, that GCU's been able to go play at. You know, like the Louisvilles, the Dukes, uh, Indianas, Kentuckys, uh, West Virginia, from a great league, uh, Hall of Fame coach, uh, 
one of those places that you kind of read about and think about. So to be able to go there and our guys have the opportunity to go play against a team like that was a lot of fun. Again, I was disappointed. I thought that was a game that we could have won. Uh, we were right in there, and then at the end, we just uh, made some really crucial mistakes. Uh, uh, defensively didn't get back and it kind of got out of hand there for a second but that was a team that I thought that uh, had struggled all year but still a really good program that had played a lot better at the end uh, you know they beat Texas Tech in their mm -hmm. in their conference tournament so that's a team that could get hot but unfortunately we didn't get it done but it was another 20 win season for GCU basketball let's look back now at some of the great moments of this past season and Sola Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University. Just like we've been doing, share the basketball. Let's have a little fun out there. Move the ball. Let's go. Labor for three. Yes! Got to go get it, Ollie, if you have to. and then takes it up over the rim. Michael Jordan in that 23 Ooh. jersey. <laughs> Shaka Laka. Whoa, Oscar Frey. Goes down. Stops. Goes in. Back to Johnson. He slices in underneath. Michael Fiki. Next, although his college career was cut short, senior guard Jared Martin has a bright future ahead. He reflects on his time at GCU and gives some insight as to what lies ahead. Lopes.com. I will always be with you, my friend. I will be with you until the end. I will always be there when you fall and help you when you need it most. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders, you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. As the 2018-19 season has come to an end, the Lopes graduate four seniors, Trey Drexel, Matt Jackson, and Michael Finke have not only been significant contributors for the Lopes, but also a vital part of the continued success of the program. The fourth senior, Jared Martin, left an imprint on the program that transcends beyond the success on the court. 
The impact he leaves behind will be felt into the future of the basketball program. After he suffered an unfortunate knee injury on February 7th, a major hole was left on the court. However, the spirit and energy he brought were felt day in and day out by his teammates and coaches. And as his time as a GCU student winds down, Jared reflects on his college career. Martin for three. Oh my, it's gonna be that kind of a night. Oh, oh yeah, Martin. Woo, he kicked his shoe off. He was so excited. Picked up by Jared Martin. Martin on the run. Bang! That's the dunk I've been waiting for. We started practice. I was actually practicing. Probably one of the best practices I had all year. It was I don't know half half an hour into practice. Just playing three on three, another move that I normally make, drove to the basket, planted, and knee just buckled. Boy, if you needed one guy in the lineup, not only here in the second half of the stretch, but in that WAC tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, it is Jared Martin, and unfortunately, the Lopes will not have number 42 in their lineup. I kind of knew right away that it was bad. I didn't know exactly, but just with way, the way it felt and with the movement I did, I kind of knew it was going to be something bad. And so I know that I know the ACL test. I've had it done to me a couple of times, and he did that and knew right away. I could tell in his face, and I knew right away with the way he moved it. When that happened, it really hit me. Uh, came pretty emotional just with the fact of the season, where we were, thinking about all the things I've been through, uh, all the games I've played here. Everyone came, supported me. He's the heart and soul of this team. He does all the dirty work. He takes the charges. He dives on the floor for the 50-50 balls. He goes down, helps out the bigs. He makes the extra pass. He's an extension of the coaching staff on the floor. They sorely miss him. When I called my mom and I told her, that's when I got pretty emotional. Uh, I just had to get through it. I went and got an MRI that day, found out that afternoon. And the next week I had surgery, so I just thought, can't look back at it too much, can't be too down about it, and just wanted to get it started so I can get back on the court. When I was 10, my, my dad passed away, and uh, my mom's been a strong, has been the strongest person in my life, and she's helped me get through that. I look back, and that was the thing when I tore my knee up, uh, I thought about what it was like back then and how mom had to struggle through that, and just the him going through cancer, and waking up and he'd have yellow in his eyes but he'd still have a smile on his face and be happy to see us kids every day and the memories I have uh, going to the beach and him teaching me how to surf. He was my first basketball coach. Him and mom were my first basketball coaches. You just, I literally that day I thought about that stuff and I was like that's the things that keep me going and it doesn't matter if you have a bad day in terms of, uh, I don't know, class, friends, injuries, uh, there's just much bigger things to life and uh, that's why I wear the number 42. I just wanted to do something for him. It's just good to have on my chest, makes me realize where I've come from. Always think about your family first and things like that. Martin takes it alone. Bam! Martin open for three. Ah! Inside though, how about that? How about that? It's been an unbelievable career. I've got to play at some of the best college basketball arenas in the world. Played and beat some really, really good teams. First time we beat New Mexico State was great, unreal when people, everyone ran on the floor. Uh, afterwards, I got to see what it was like and it was crazy. Uh, the San Diego State game where I jumped off on the scores table, that was definitely a moment I'll, I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. Just playing with these guys is moments where you overcome with so much high emotions that uh, that happens so much in team sports, and I think that's been that'll be the, the biggest thing I miss for sure. I just do anything I can, just do my part. Um, if that's getting guys emotionally ready for the game, if that's talking to them, coaching them up, giving them points, because I know I've been here, I know how Coach Marley thinks, I know how he acts. Hopefully, I can get back to playing the way I was, and if I can, uh, I feel like I have the uh, utmost confidence to get into a team and get a roster spot. So we'll just wait and see. I just got to take every day as it is. Can't look too far ahead, and just keep working towards that goal. When we come back, we've compiled some of the best trick shots this season from the GCU student managers. That's next on the Dan Marley Show. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, 
And they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers and we're USAA members for life. USAA, get your insurance quote today. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Throughout the season, the GCU student managers have livened up the show with some of their best trick shots. Oh my God! <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing what they can do next oh. year. <laughs> Coming up in the world of GCU sports, the baseball team welcomes in the team from down south as they go to battle with U of A. Softball continues conference play with CSU Bakersfield April 5th and 6th. And men's volleyball wraps their regular season with BYU April 4th and Stanford on April 6th. Just a reminder that if you can't attend, all these games will be streamed on GCU.tv. When we come back, Lopes insider Paul Coro joins the show with his thoughts on the 2018-19 season and to take a deeper dive into what the roster will look like next season. Education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Lopes insider Paul Coro. As we look back, Paul, at this season, the 21 season, another one for head coach Dan Marley, but disappointment, albeit they went to the championship game in their conference for the second straight year, second straight year of eligibility. Yeah, it's, it's hard because of the disappointment, that feeling again of being one step away, but big picture, they've established themselves as a program that's there every year now. That's yeah. four 20 win seasons in a row. That's two championship game visits in a row. Not a lot of programs do that. That's, that can't be taken for granted. There's only uh, 28 teams in the nation that have won uh, 20 games four seasons in a row, and GCU's one of them. Wow. You look at the uh, season, the players, they, they were athletic. Coach Marley talked about it being, maybe being his best team that he's compiled here. Uh, Carlos Johnson certainly shined in those two conference matchups, 31 and 35 points in the quarterfinals and semifinals. But some of the players talk about their performances, if you would. Yeah, well, Carlos, it's nice to have him for another year because yeah. you always hear Dan Marley talk about how Casey Benson, Michael Finke kind of felt their way at the end. And that sort of happened with Carlos Johnson. He changed roles from six man to starter to primary scorer, and then he burst at, at the WAC tournament. So it's nice that he can build on that. But lots of guys coming back, you know, four of the top six scorers will be back next year. Um, Alessandro Labor, 
still has that game in him that won uh, all WAC first team and was preseason player of the year. So really you have two all WAC players returning. Um, Oscar Freire was a preseason all WAC guy. We kind of saw flashes of his defense again at the end of the season. So lots of potential with that returning group still and then excitement about the guys that were redshirting and the incoming recruit. Yeah, Isaiah Brown, Milstead coming back, Mikey Dixon, the transfer from St. John's, Javon Blackshear is a highly high ranked recruit as well. They're pretty pretty good at the guard spot, at least from a depth standpoint. They need to fill the void with Michael Finke gone and get another big, no doubt. Yeah, they definitely need to find a rebounder. You know, we talked a lot about rebounding all season and they did a great job of gang rebounding but they had to have help from guys like Trey Drexel. Mm -hmm. Great uh, job of, by him as a senior, a big guard to lead them in rebounding at times. But it'll be a different dynamic to the team because they'll be a lot speedier. Uh, they'll have a lot of guard play. Uh, and it'll be more of that Dan Marley style of up and down, pushing the tempo because you have a lot of guys who can run. And, and now you have multiple scorers and guys that are versatile to do different things on the wing. What about leadership? You know, Jared Martin went down and it seemed to really hit this team hard. When you look at the returners, who's going to be that guy that steps up uh, right now? It, it might be a little hard pressed to find out who that guy is, knowing that Jared went down and they did suffer. Yeah, I guess that's uh, to be determined who who steps into the, into that role. I think uh, Carlos Johnson has that ability now that he has the platform to do it. I think Oscar Freyer is a four-year guy. He's invested in this program. Uh, he should be one of those guys that takes hold of his senior year and, and, and knows what Dan Marley wants the way Jared Martin did. This conference, is the RPI continues to rise. New Mexico State definitely at the cream of the crop. They they had the depth, coach talked about, you kind of went six or seven deep. Well, they went 13 or 14 and a lot of their core players are coming back. Yeah, I think about Eli Chua is about the only important player that they'll they'll lose. So you got to get better if you're going to knock them off. And, you know, obviously the Lopes championship game wasn't indicative of how close they were as a team uh, to the Aggies. Those first two games easily could have gone the Lopes way, but that's easier said than done. I think Dan Marley would tell you that they got to learn how to finish those games. They had a ton of those games. I yeah. think there was eight games where they were within three tied or leading in the final minute regulation that they didn't win. So that would drastically change a 20 and 14 record to, you know, if you split those games, you're 24 and 10, and it, uh, the season looks completely different. Up next, Coach discusses the turning point of the season and what his initial thoughts are looking ahead to next year's roster. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders, you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. I will always be with you, my friend. I will be with you until the end. I will always be there when you fall and help you when you need it most. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! GCULopes.com. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show, Barry and the head coach Dan Marley for one final segment. As you look back at the season, some positives, perhaps some negatives. What, what were, what's your impression now as you've absorbed this season? A um, little bit of both. Uh, I thought we again uh, had talent 
uh, played well. I, I thought that, again, we, we were so close early in the year in a really tough non-conference schedule uh, to win in some big games. Uh, you think about it, uh, you know, South Dakota State, where we started off, uh, a really great place to play against a, a really good team. Uh, lost by three, I think. Had a chance to win that game. A look at Seton Hall, uh, up a couple points with under a minute to go. Uh, couldn't finish that one out. Uh, Nevada, a talking stick resort, uh, really pushed them to the limit, uh, didn't find a way to win it. Uh, so I think I can take some positives out of, of how we're starting to compete against really good teams and programs. Uh, we just got to get over the hump. Uh, disappointed in uh, the WAC season, we were 7-1. and one. Uh, Should have been 8-0, no, you know, half-court shot uh, at New Mexico State. I'm, I'm, in, I'm happy with the way our guys are now competing and have chances to, to win and probably should have won that game. And then uh, I guess the biggest disappointment to me is Jared. Um, yeah. Playing his best basketball, fifth year senior, uh, the leader of this team, emotionally, physically, uh, during practice, during games, uh, to lose him to a non-contact injury in practice, uh, to tear his ACL. I think it really took the wind out of our sails for a couple games uh, because of that. So to finish third in the conference was very disappointing. Um, but the way our guys bounce back uh, and to find a way to, uh, to be in the finals in the WAC conference again uh, is a step forward. Uh, so I've learned a lot this year. Um, I thought this team was the best team we've had. Uh, the record may not show that, but I thought our non-conference was very uh, challenging. And to win 20 games again was great. To get to the finals was great. Uh, so it just gives me more motivation to continue to recruit hard, to get players in here, and to find a way to, uh, to get it done next year. So you've got Laver, Milstead, um, also Oscar Freyer coming back, kind of being that nucleus. You're pretty, pretty deep at, at guard position. Isaiah is going to play. You've got Mikey Dixon, the transfer from uh, St. John's coming in. Javon is a recruit. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you look forward to next year's team, a you know, little bit behind the curtain here, very early peak. Well, I, you know, I, I think we'll be talented, especially at the guard spot. You know, Carlos will be a senior. Got JJ stepping in. Isaiah, Mikey will be uh, eligible uh, second semester. Um, Javon is a, is a big time recruit, uh, Damari. But to me, it's uh, the message to my guys is that it's not good enough, and uh, nobody's going to come in uh, next year with a starting spot. I'm going to continue to recruit. Uh, we're going to push each other. It's uh, I'm going to challenge them to be leaders, uh, to hold each other to hold each other accountable and to find a way to start winning uh, big games. Uh, and that's, that's something that I have to do too. I know I'm going to be better this summer. I'll continue to, to work at my craft. I'll be a better coach next year. And I'm excited about what we have coming back. And we're not done. Uh, you know, we'll have at least three scholarships. Uh, so we'll go out and find the best players available. I want to get a little more athletic. Mm -hmm. I thought that hurt us a little bit. Uh, I thought our seniors terrific. Uh, I thought Trey and Michael. Uh, as one-year transfers, did a terrific job for us. Uh, Michael was unbelievable, had some career games. Trey proved that he was a Division I guy. And then I uh, can't say enough about Matt and Jared, uh, two fifth-year seniors who really helped build a culture here that's been uh, sustainable and, and very successful. So couldn't thank them enough for their efforts. Uh, but I'm really excited about what we have going forward. Well, thank you so much for your time all season long. Barry, Coach. you're always the best. Thanks, well, I buddy. appreciate that. Check's in the mail. And we want to thank you as well for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.